Welcome back to the LEC as Rogue bounced back from the loss they suffered from yesterday and grabbed the first win today here in the Super Week and Comp. Thank you so much for joining me for this interview. I want to talk about Rogue in general because you had a splashy start to the season. A little bit more difficulties for the past week. What do you attribute this to? Is it you, you, you have been more experimenting maybe or teams catching up on you? What's your explanation on this? Uh, I think we are pretty much just trolling. Uh, okay. Most of the games that we lost, <laughs> yeah. I mean, for example, the first week that we went 0-2, I felt like we just didn't have a, a very good read on the meta and the Zeri coming into competitive, I feel it was a huge change, especially for the AD role. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think overall, we just made some silly mistakes and that's why well, they punished us. You, you had a good head start. I mean, uh, in this situation, you can allow yourself to maybe, let's say experiment and not troll. I think it's a better term here. But um, do you think also the teams have been catching up on the overall level in the LEC? Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, considering if you compare the first weeks uh, now to the last, I feel like teams are drafting a lot better and they finally realize what they have to play in every lane. So right. yeah, for sure. I mean, the drafts are way better now and yeah. the teams are catching up, they're watching the best teams, I suppose, from every region, every major region, and yeah. I see. It looks like the competition of, gets better and better. Thinking of uh, other regions, actually, since you mentioned it, uh, how much of an inspiration do you take from the other leagues, given that you have Malrong in your, uh, in your team, maybe? LPL, LCK, what's your inspiration? I mean, it's really cool, especially because Marlon used to be and is friends with like Showmaker, mm -hmm. Khan, and all of those players that have gone until World Final, they even World World Championship. So it's for sure re really cool uh, uh -huh. to overall just watch the LCK. Oh my God, the camera died again. I think I need to. It's to fine. It, uh... I can still hear you. Okay. Uh, we will try and fix the so... video for now, but uh, yeah. Let's keep on talking. <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, especially this year, I think. Almost everyone is watching T1 and their okay. miracle run. I feel like they will probably just make it. It looks really hype. I mean, I was hoping the same for Rogue, but in the end it was a bit of such. <laughs> but yeah, it's pretty cool to watch, uh, especially LCK. And of course, LPL remains for now, I do believe, the top region. I feel like mm -hmm. there are many stack teams there. So it's also interesting region for sure to watch. Yeah, and see how teams play around the world, especially leading to MSI uh, in a couple months. Now, last question about you and Rogue overall. Leading to playoffs with the five teams we have now, one remaining, what do you think will be the overall level of the playoffs LEC this year? I feel like it should overall be high. I feel mm -hmm. like every team will try hard their lives because I feel like everyone has the mindset now that honestly everyone can take it. It's not, I don't think it's like, when it was 2019 and it was pretty much G2 or Fnatic, right? I feel like yeah. right now there is a lot of, comp I mean, not a lot of competition. Maybe the competition is like closer. Uh, its team is closer to each other in terms of level. So yeah. it will for sure be a banger and there will also be some, an exception, uh, how is it called? Let's say, interesting not usual players, let's uh, results, yeah. let's say. Yeah, okay. some interesting results, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, a lot of suspense, exciting playoffs ahead. You still have one more game uh, to play tomorrow, Come, so I'll just let you rest and get ready for tomorrow. Thank you very much for the interview. Thank you for and having me. And good luck me. on the last day of Super Week. My pleasure. And Thank before we load on to the next game, let's hear about Ashley and her thoughts on the Professor Healy memes in Korea. That's the W gone for Zanzara, which is going to be big. Okay. Flash it, double bomb, double stun. Hillisang making the play. They struggled, the desperation coming in through Haley, but there's nothing you can do. By self-made, that I think is a big purchase, because up into <laughs> I understand. You see Hilly just inch into a, a, a bot lane. You're like, what are you doing? Coin flip just all the time. He has a plan. Hilly has intention here. It's just, it's kind of a feast or famine play style. Sometimes he gets caught out when he's going for it. Well, that's why in the LCK, they call him the professor, right? Because he does think that way. Oh. <laughs> to describe this like professor meme, I actually need to go back to 2020, which was the time that the Korean fans actually started watching the LEC a lot. So it was actually the game around April in 2020 when Hillisung played a trundle with a Hydra. Nuketuck will get taken out, but Hillisung is such a nuisance. 
you can't do anything about it. It's like, okay, I can't do, I, I can't do, deal with you, mate. Hillasang beating out Barbie right now in the 1v1. Nuke Duck's on his way. How many people do you have to send to deal with this living troll? In the beginning, I'll be really, really honest with you, it was a bit of a double-edged sword. We either think he's trolling or his plays are so high level and it's like, you know, 500 IQ that we simply don't understand it and he's giving like, you know, this next dimensional that lecture on what League was supposed to be played. And it was like two weeks after that when he played the Thresh with Brits and is Hilly building a wit's end? My god, yes he is. Oh boy! It was then when the kind of the double-edged kind of mocking meme became a praise. Wow, it's the professor. Like, you know, your lectures are too good. Your lectures are too fast for us. I mean, honestly, I take it as an uh, honor. Like, it's something that not everyone has, like a nickname that is coming from Korea and it's like it just, it's its not a bad thing, it's actually, they think that I'm smart or unique and I take it as a compliment and I really enjoy it. I think people do recognize Hellasung for his consistency in just how well he plays. Like, I do believe that now that the Koreans have a closer eye on the LEC and they do also recognize Hellasung as one of the more consistent, you know, one of the more recognized, uh, one of the most staff active players in the LEC. Uh, so Hellasung is consistent in a coin flip way. <laughs> <laughs> That's the amazing thing about Hellasung, you know, it doesn't matter which team he's going against, it doesn't matter whether he is going against like a regular season game in LEC or he's going against, you know, top esports at Wells. So he's always aggressive, he's always gonna tar dive, he's always gonna try to like, you know, get flash out of you. So when I say cons Hillisung is consistent, he is consistent in a Hillisung way. Uh, yes, I'm willing to do no matter what to win the game and if people think it's weird sometimes, then they can think it's weird. I just I'm gonna do it no matter what, no matter how I'm gonna look after the play, and uh, this is like part of how I think the game should be played from my role. So this is who I am, and I like the the nickname. I don't I don't mind it. I enjoy it. Ah, he's not only super precious, but also a really, really, really insanely talented player who is now uh, coming into his apex, really. I think yesterday, I believe it was Grabs uh, that said this isn't even maybe his his best level. I, I actually oh, know if it's Grabs or who it was. He's not even playing at his peak, actually, right now. Oh, it was Yamato, actually. Uh, no, who was no, it? It was, it was Grabs. It was Grabs. Okay, I'm, yeah, having, grabs. I'm second guessing myself. <laughs> uh, regardless, Hillisung never second guesses himself, which is True. what we get also from this content piece. Um, Niski, uh, you have a lot of experience mm -hmm. playing with the man as well. Uh, yeah, tell us about what he brings that we don't necessarily see. I mean, I feel like when you play with Hillisung in a team, you, he forces you to play the game in a certain way where you must do some crazy plays, you must trust him, and then he will trust you back. And then like when that trust is there, then there's like amazing things happening. Mm -hmm. But I feel like also if you don't trust him, then everything goes wrong. <laughs> yeah, and you can see the games turn into like bloodbaths half the time. I wonder if Hillisang is the one kind of piloting everyone to just fight, 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 which is a good thing because it's not only fun to watch, but mm -hmm. a lot of times it works out. It's like the, do you trust me? Do you trust me? That's like <laughs> yeah, how yeah. it goes. Uh, talking about um, Hillisung, he's in the conversation for MVP, and we wanted to talk about uh, a different kind of MVP-ish tier list, namely the mid lane tier list, because we have Fnatic versus Misfits, and this is Niski's mid lane tier list. <laughs> We're going to need some explanation. <laughs> okay, so I put him on top, because I believe he's still the best in Europe, even though I think during Spring Split, he's not doing as great, but I think once playful hit, he will be the best. And then I put Veteo second because I think he deserves to be there. Like, I think Misfits as a team is worse than Rogue, for example. So that's why I put him above Larson. And I still think Larson is good. So third, and then Caps and Perks both. Is... Kind of crazy that they're four and five. It's a weird world we live in, isn't yeah. it? The two best Western players we ever had are now fourth and fifth in the mid lane tier list, which is a good and a bad thing, right? The good thing mm -hmm. is there's a lot more competition in the LEC. The bad thing and the question is, will they return to that form? I know playoffs will be hey, a different Caps beast for both of these. really well. Yeah, uh, clap, Claps is back, claps Perks is back. in best of five, so maybe that shifts around towards the end of playoffs. But I agree with the VTO Humanoid one where you've got Humanoid, who is just going to be more, con I think, more consistent overall carry, especially from the lane phase, whereas VTO is like the playmaking X Factor kind of star player. Misfits have. Oh yeah, and I guess Misfits also just really depends on him, right, for that star uh, power. He really pops off also in the late game. Humanoid is also very strong in the early game and is an early game machine, but I think that also comes down to what they both have to provide to both of their teams, right? 
Yeah, of course. I mean, we, we talked about it before and we saw it in interviews about how humanoids voice phonetics. So he does a lot of the things we can't see, like the intangibles in a way where he is communicating a lot for his team, which is also impressive if you take into account that he's actually winning his lane a lot of the times in the early stages, right? So not only is he talking a lot, maybe helping out on the plans mid-game, he's trying to direct his team and give some kind of uh, essence to where they want to play towards, but he's also kind of winning his lane and getting the team ahead. This is a matchup we could see in the playoffs, of course. Misfits versus Fnatic, and that would be great. So we're looking forward to that one. If Fnatic win this game versus Misfits, they lock themselves and Rogue in the top two. So with uh, what you've seen from both of the teams, Niski, uh, what's it going to come down to and who's going to take it? I think it will just depend on how uh, like how behind V2 will be. Because I remember uh, when they played uh, the split, V2 lost, like died once, I think, and then Humano just completely won the game, but that's also when he had TF. <laughs> so hopefully they won TF, first of all. <laughs> and mm -hmm. then I want to see Vito on like Silas or Akali, I think. And hopefully he's not too behind by 15 minutes and he, I think they can win. A playmaker. Yesterday, Medic and his cast made Hilly MVP already. This time, Vito's in the game as well. So <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited to see what's going to happen now. Take it away, Medic. Thank you very much, Shocks. <laughs> I'm here with Gulbog, two support mains, only going to talk about the supports for the rest of the game. But it is a big game. Uh, Misfits versus Fnatic up next. Fnatic still fighting with Rogue for that first spot. I will say I, I misspoke in the last game where I said Yo. Fnatic have 2-0 over Rogue. They actually won and won, obviously, because Rogue went 9-0. But Fnatic have more wins in the second half of the season. So if Rogue and Fnatic tie at the top of the table, Fnatic would win that tiebreak. Misfits, though, can play spoiler. They can still catch up with both Rogue and Fnatic and maybe be our unlikely first place team at the end of the regular season. It would be a weird world, but it's certainly a world that can uh, happen. So let's just get right into Gem Select. Let's do it. It's hard to throw to like a, a video or something when someone's talking in your ear, isn't it? Cool? I mean, definitely. It, it's something that needs a little bit of a practice. Obviously, it takes, it takes you just don't know what you're, you're talking there, about. Mate. Yeah, you're I know. getting there. I know. Mate. It's great Slowly to have you. Surely. It's great to have you on board for this uh, split of the LEC and hopefully for many more to come. But <laughs> for now, let us focus in on the games. Misfits versus Fnatic. Misfits on the blue. Fnatic on the red. Are we going to see the usual retinue of bands? Twisted Fate immediately taken away. Yeah, Niski was just talking about this pick as well. And you know, I love every time we have Niski on the desk. He's the one who keeps talking about Twisted Fate, especially because he was the guy on Fnatic last year mm -hmm. who just kept being a menace on that pick in itself and they're taking away, uh, away a lot of these global picks from the mid lane from humanoid uh, we just saw last on the silas uh, or rice rather as well and all in all rice and twisted fate are just great champions rice gets to push in mid lane early he gets to move around twisted fate will be pushed in in the early game but quite often at that level six i mean it's almost global for him with that ultimate always being able to join bot or top so far Arcane a AD carry Jinx is still <laughs> up and available. They've removed the Caitlyn. Fnatic, Deep. are you looking that way as well? Is the Gwen we're going to be looking at? Jace is up and available as well. Something we know that has risen in priority in the top laners as well. There's loads of power picks still being up and available. And speaking of power picks, it will be the Sin Sao taken away from Schlatzen. But Hecarim, a champion we've seen a lot of priority on for Misfits as well, and a lot of junglers as well. All in all, Why is are available. Why you talking about Hecarim, man? Why yeah, are you talking about Hecarim? I mean, get your crystal ball yes, out. I know. Get your crystal ball out. Uh, I know. Crumble it into fine pieces because uh, it's powder time. Oh, yeah. I'm so hyped for Jinx Aphelios once again. <sighs> yeah, me too. Um, Maybe not Aphelios. Thresh immediately locked in for Hilla, saying such a strong support for him. Yeah, and usually we would add, right, yeah, there we go. Finally, Hecarim yeah. coming through as well. I was going to say, usually we see the second pick being picked up with uh, Jungler instead. And we see actually a lot of cha uh, teams rather on red side be like, oh, we see the Jinx. Let's just take away the Aphelios now. Well, you don't have to do that now. Yep. You can do it on three. You can take multiple power picks. You don't have to rotate on R1 and R2. Uh, R2. Now you have the Thresh. That's pairing up nicely with the Aphelios. You have the Hecarim as well, so a strong jungler. And from the side of Misfits, it's looking like they want to play with a safe pick with the Tom Kench. Now, usually with the laning phase in itself, now that you don't have that gobble pre-six, they're actually 
is a lot of pressure that comes through from a Thresh, and we see what happens when Hilly is allowed to roam around, especially in the early game. So this will be a lane where Hilly already will have a lot of influence in the early game. On the opposite side of Misfits, they rally out with a victory in the mid lane. So two Arcane Champions now on the side of Misfits, which we know are quite powerful, and moving into the second ban phase. I think we can expect some mid lane ban or top lane yeah. ban. Rather, some of the summer solo laners can be hit a bit. That is one of the risks you run by not picking a Felios on one, two on the red side, is you you then dictate the fact you're going to pick Tefelios on three, meaning the enemy team can pick a mid laner and ban out your mids on the second rotation of bans. It is a little bit of a risk, but Fnatic will be very happy with the Hecarim and Felios Thresh combination that they have already picked up. Irelia removed from the pool by Fnatic. And we're just trying to limit something that Hirit can play. I'm a little surprised they didn't go towards the junglers. Hirit has been predominantly a weak side player for Misfits. And so taking away some of the stronger picks for him isn't always the way that you shut down Misfits. Yeah, but the thing is as well, Jarman is already taken off the table. Zinsao is already taken off the table. Slatan's Lee Sin is probably the one mm -hmm. that springs to mind. But outside of that, I mean, you're quite happy with having the Hecarim, I think. And on the side of Fnatic, you can just counter pick on four for the mid lane. You can get a favorable matchup for the top lane, rather, and just R5, yep. uh, the, the champion for Wunder. So I'd say as a red draft, red side draft currently for Fnatic, they're quite happy with the way things are going. So I think maybe ban away the Lee Sin here, and then you're quite happy about it. I agree with you there, Goldborg. I think the Lee Sin would be a great ban. Instead, the Volley Bear. Schlatan's most played this season is that Lee. He's won, I believe, six of his seven games on the champ. Maybe five of his seven. I'm trying to do the mental maths. Uh, but he's having a very strong season on it. And when he can help Misfits get ahead in the early game, something they haven't done too often, Misfits very strong when it comes to mid and late game team fights. Fnatic, though, across the board, I think, have looked stronger in the last few weeks. So I very much trust what they are doing so far in this pick ban. LeBlanc, the final ban, you see Misfits get rid of two strong mid laners. They say, okay, Humanoid, you're not gonna be able to roam around because you don't have Twisted Fate or the Rise. We're not gonna give you a lane that can pressure the victor in the Oriana or the LeBlanc. Where are you going to go next? Yeah, that's the thing, because you still have champions that can contest victor in the early game if you wanna go for a control mage like the Syndra. I think Oriana is a really smart ban just due to the fact that it pairs up so nicely with the Hecarim. And they actually come out with the Jace here, which I think was speaking to us a little bit in the draft with the mm -hmm. Aurelia ban. That that came out um, and other champions are still available. We've seen Hirid be quite fond of just weak siding on an R recently and I think it makes a lot of sense because it's actually a champion that can have that side lane presence. We know Hirid quite likes but also a champion that can accelerate in a team fight setting. So let's see what Misfits decides to round out their draft with now that Hirid had actually been given counter pick for once and no it will actually be the Camille. Something we saw him on a lot in 2021. Camille a comfort pick for him. He's played it a couple of times so far this spring. Has only won on it as well, 2-0 so far. So, I mean, uh, two, two games is not the largest sample size, but it's good news for Misfits, of course, as they look to round out this draft. Jungle is where we're going. What are we looking towards? That Lee Sin still rears his ugly head and will be locked in for okay. Misfits immediately, though. Okay, so that's why we were saving it. That's what they're looking for on Fnatic's side. So they want to be high be here. They want to have that backline access. Now, I think Tamken functions really well into Akali because she gets to take away one of the targets that Akali is trying to go on. All in all, it's Misfits' composition. I think it's dangerous for them to play towards the bot side in the early game. They can only play from the engage with Tamkench, which is not the most reliable one to go for. So that gives you some pressure up towards the top side if you can get it. But all in all, in the early game, a lot of that pressure is going to be in Schlatten and where he can apply his early game pressure on the Lee Sin. On the side of Fnatic, you got that Thresh from Helisang that can have some influence on the map. I think that Fnatic, they're just going to be looking into pushing the bot lane, have upset back on three, and then see how much Helisang can get done at the map. Facilitate Humanoid on this Akali, because if he takes over the lane, well, it's going to be very difficult to deal with him in a side lane or even around some objectives. Humanoid, not a player that we would usually look at Akali as a comfort pick. He's played it 19 times across the course of his career. Last time was back in August of last year, I believe, or July of last year, against Schalke. But it is an explosive mid laner, and playing it into VTO is a bit of a statement as well. VTO made his name on this champion alongside Zoe last year, and of course, we have saw the comeback against G2 last week, much of it off the back of VTO's Akali. Misfits going very slower composition, you know, lots of control in the team fights. Fnatic, a little bit more explosive. Let's see who comes out on top.
and onto Summoner's Rift, we dive into the deep and muddied waters that is Fnatic uh, versus Misfits. And the question is, is giving Hillasang upset? Is he, no, that's not that's not the sentence I was going for. He was so tense until he's I said... He's giving Hillisang option. Yes, back Hillisang. in the day when they were creating the roster, giving Hillisang option I mean, it's might worked have out well prompted for them. the best spot lane we have in the league. You're right, Medic. Uh, that's a I great mean, question. Great management decision from Fnatic, pairing up those two together. You're right. It's a great narrative to run. I totally agree with that, Goldborg, and I'm glad I brought it up at the start of Minions this game. And lots of people calling it the best bot lane in the West. Arguable, I think. Core JJ and Hans Summer have made a name for themselves, but we haven't seen too much of them together on Team Liquid. Ayla subbing in for Core JJ over the last week or so, and obviously before Core JJ got his green card. But the question I really wanted to ask is, if, is giving Hillasang Thresh a huge mistake on Misfits Pass? Because in the in, in the past, it has been. You give him either Rakan or Thresh, and he just totally takes over the game. Yeah, but also at this time, Medic is giving any champion to him at this point. Like, yeah. like, and there's so many threats on Fnatic as well, right? It's not just Hillisang. It's the side of uh, Humanoid, e even Rasok to some extent as well at times, uh, although not as often. But it, it, there is just lo a lot of threats on the side of Fnatic, and, and it makes it hard to ban out against these champions. But we'll see. You have the gobble up from Mercer that can deal a bit, little bit with it. BTO in the mid lane matchup, as we've already highlighted one time today, is making the full extent of having a range control mage into a melee assassin level one. Usually, you want to be able to uh, chime them out of lane like this. Humanoid not having a good time, BTO. Quite happy about the laning phase so far. Humanoid running the door and shield as well for that little bit of extra sustain. Misfits look like they got the push in this bottom lane. Kind of expected. Jinx with the rockets. Very strong at getting early advantages in the lane. This final melee minion will give them two. So they'll be able to force Hillisang and upset away from that wave. And Hillisang upset giving them the respect they deserve. But I do want to come back to that mid lane matchup because it is a matchup for the ages right now. I think last year you would have looked at it and said, okay, Humanoid, the more experienced, the more veteran of the two, VTO, the rising star. This year, VTO has made a name for himself. And in on and of his own right, he is in discussions for MVP. Humanoid continues to be one of the best performing mids, if not the best performing mid generally in our league. But VTO is definitely challenging him at the top as Neon is hooked in the bottom lane, uses the heal early there. Upset, ignited, ticking away, does have the heal, will wait until the Ignite goes down and then still has the ability to use it after those Grievous Wounds have fallen off. So I'm gonna spell advantage for the side of Fnatic here, but Upset is fairly low already, albeit that heal won't be nullified by the Ignite's Grievous Wounds as you talked about yourself just there. Schlatzen is pathing down towards this bot side as well, so big minion wave, and he got the time to work around with it. Hilly, he might just go so down in this instance. Hilly has Flay. He's now got Lantern, there's the TP. Lantern back, Mercer flashes away from the play. Hillisang looking for the chase, he's still got the hook. And Misfits, they saw it, they were hungry for it, but they're not gonna be able to take it. Neon hooked as well. Locked up, Schlatten diving forward, but Wonder TP in just at the right time. It's two already for Fnatic. They're looking to make it three as oh they no. find one in the mid lane. It all collapses for the bunnies. They are culled by Fnatic. Beautiful hook from Hilly Sang in that instance, catching out the champion in the fuck of all in the bush as well. While Upset is just soloing Mercer. Wonder with the TP because he had the top lane priority of the matchup. Yes, Wonder is going to be losing out waves on top side. Yes, Harry is going to be given, getting a little bit, but Rasok knew he could walk into the mid lane because he saw the jungle on the bot side. Wonder now on a reset, as you can see on the minimap, is allowed to just TP in. And you gotta say, a little bit indecisive from the side of Misfits. As soon as the auto attack came through from Misfits, TP is channeled from Wonder, oh, and they just, just scatter. And there you say it, that hook from Hilly, instead of going for the easy kill on Mercer, decides to take the higher risk one because they know Opsit can take care of Mercer. B2 caught off guard, already flashing. And with the Ghost combined with the even the flash on from Humanoid, they kick up another kill. Rasok and Fnatic just dominating the early game here. Already 1,300 gold ahead and Fnatic. It's just the presence of mind to react to the push in the bottom lane, to not back off too far, knowing you can have the TP coming in. Wonder did lose a little bit in the top lane. Here it was able to get the way pushed into the tower, but he actually didn't even lose a plate off that top lane turret. Because of that, Fnatic very much in the driver's seat. Look at this, Upside is out roaming as well with the Gravitum because he still has to flash. He can just flash into the mid lane and hit a Gravitum, follow up with Hillisang who's also out roaming. It's not very often we see an entire bot lane roaming this time of the time. We do, Slatan and Rasok. 
Yeah, Schlatan has to try and jump away, but Wonder and Razork on the chase here. Him at low, Schlatan the same. Him at great, knocked Wanda. down the wall dive. Will flash. Schlatan flashes away with the safeguard. Razork smites Minion to try and get onto Schlatan. And he no will mana, he's got no mana not for the Q. have enough mana for the Q. Schlatan survives. Wonder, though, is still looking for it. Fnatic unwilling to let anyone from Misfits get out alive. The Shock Blast just wide. It's not clean. One for one on the side of the top side here. Here it forces out the TP offset. This is big as well. a lot of uh, minions yeah. down towards the bot side. It's not just the minions though. You lose maybe two plates here. Upset is going to step forward. As you say, he's got the Graviton, but he really can't deal with Neon and Mercer pushing into him. The second plate will just go. Hold it. And stay on the map. But we'll remember, there's no vision the right here. So Rastok, he's coming down once again. Offset, yep. he has the garment up. And Mercer pushing forward, but the play's going to pull him back. Thick skin, not enough to save him. And you could see Mercer and Neon as greedy as I was with my casting, saying that the plate would go down. They stayed around just a second too long forward. And once again, Fnatic are able to find that pick in the bottom side of the map. You're right, Medic. That was greed for the plate there. And Fnatic, they capitalized on it. Find themselves another pick. Rastok, reset immediately. And they're still looking for this bot side. So while Opset had to forfeit a wave, throwing it right back to Neon, but not feeling ready for a dive. Mercer has respawned as well. Vito actually making his way up towards the top side. Wunder is full HP up here. I mean, but Hit, ultimates are ready. Yeah, Hibbit has the Hexagon to which means he can reset the tower aggro. He takes it to start with. There's the Chaos Storm. Hexagon to made him not used, but Wonder will fall. VTO can tank two shots very healthily, and Misfits are able to find a cross map play. Brilliant dive from Misfit here. They utilize the pressure VTO have from the mid lane, move it out to the top side, and we're so used to seeing the rest of the team facilitate VTO this time around. It's him moving up to mi hi hear it, and they get the kill on Wonder. No teleport either, so he's going to be losing one more wave as well. And that's what you want to see from Misfits in this sort of situation where everything has gone disastrously in the bottom lane. You look for that three-man play early on. You lost three kills because of it. You have to start making plays on the other side of the map because otherwise, a team like Fnatic in the form they're in would just bleed you dry. Yeah, and this early game, it's nothing but uh, exciting or boring, rather, where we're going to have Rift Tower spawning 10 seconds as well. It looked for a second like Hillisang wanted to make his movement up towards the top side as well. Decides to move down into the bot side as well now that they see Mercer is coming in. So. Still standard lanes, and I wonder how long that Rift Held or even Drake will go without contestion because the neutral objective so far has not been prioritized. It's been all about making plays on different lanes. Fnatic, because of these early plays, have got about a thousand gold ahead. Wonder still no flash. Probably seven to ten seconds on that. And here goes Schlatan, and they timed this perfectly. Schlatan knocked back underneath the tower. Wonder we're able to get a one for one. Razork on his way as well, has the Onslaught of Shadows. is going to get forced away from the movement he was making up the map. And Razork will start the Rift out. Yeah, I mean, it was a good combo in terms of hitting it, the King, getting the stun immediately, but it actually made so that even when Slatan focused the Sonic Wave on it, he was still in tower range and unfortunately went down. So Wonder able to trade it one for one. What could they get on the opposite side of the map? Not much. Razork tried to start up the Rift Herald. Now they're going to be taking away some Raptor camps instead, just to be getting a little bit of more gold injection. But you can see, even though there has been focus from Misfits on the top side, Wonder getting a couple of kills out of it means he's still ahead in gold. He's 300 gold ahead, even though he's been forced off a couple of waves. It looks like here it's still yet to take that first plate. And Fnatic finding advantages across the map. Schlatten able to steal this away with a smite. Razzle now stepping into Mercer, but Hillisang's here, level six already on him. A humanoid as well. Moving down from the, t uh, the middle lane, it puts Misfits in such a difficult situation. Slatan has not had a moment to breathe in this game, and every time he's ganked, he's either been counter ganked or he's died. Fnatic are just working the map so well as a cohesive unit early on. Fnatic, they're so hyper aggressive. You even saw that humanoid drop the wave in the mid lane, let it crash into the mid lane turret just to try and die. Uh, what do you say? Join the bot side skirmisher around that jungle there. And now pushing in the mid lane together as a unit, stacking a wave on top side that Wonder is now crashing. They're going to be starting up the Rift Herald. There's a big thing that you can see here, though. What Fnatic did was they got bot side control of that bot side jungle. They then moved four people up towards this top side and forced Hirid off a wave. Because of that, Upset has to seed pressure in the bottom lane. 
However, when he was backing away, the wave wasn't at his tower. So he had a free time where he wasn't losing CS, where he could actually just cede any pressure on that bottom side but of the map. But let me add that Misfit coin as well, because they did that with their bot lane just now in response as well, because Neon pushed in the bot side wave, moved up with Mercer, Fnatic realizing that Opset was on a reset down towards the bot side, and then have to forfeit yep. the Rift Tower control as well. So not only are both teams hyper aggressive in terms of how they try to respond in each other when skirmishes are happening, it's also just about the standard rotation that we're seeing. Yeah, and it's really smart from both teams to be able to react to what the other one's doing to allow that sort of the relief of pressure. You know, you, you get rid of a bit of the steam that's building up on one side of the map and you start putting the pressure down towards the other side. And it just keeps going. Yep. Four men from Misfits joins the Herald fight. Four men from Fnatic comes in after a reset. And it looks like Misfits, they're just going to be forfeiting the objective for now. Mercer is making his way down towards the bot side, seeing if they can inject some more plating into Neon. But you got to admit, the big play or the big investment should go in the favor of Fnatic with a Rift held in the inventory. And one of the, the key moments here is where Schlatan is when this counter pressure is exuded on the map, right? If he's starting up the Rift Held and then doesn't immediately go down towards the bottom side to answer with a Drake, Fnatic in the end come out on top of it because Upset is willing to give up a wave to this tower. You can see Fnatic just getting a slight edge in these trades, meaning they keep this thousand gold lead and they now get the neutral objective on top of it. The question yeah. is, will Schlatter now gain control of the bottom side? Yeah, and even then, just like, just having a look at Thanos as well, the CS number, I kind of want to highlight it first, Humanoid, staying even in this matchup, is actually super impressive. Yeah. But also down towards the bot side of the map, it's actually Neon who's been able to take the CS lead against Offset. Neon has been doing a great Offset job. Offset doesn't get that play. He does not. Yeah. Um, and not so much when you have a Jinx, is it for the laning phase? It's about how much gold can you accumulate before you move into the mid game where you really start seeing the spikes in the team fighting scenario as well. Oh man, I, I love this sort of game where it has been explosive, you know, nine kills in 12 minutes is, is relatively fast paced. But after that initial explosion, when we saw all those kills, you just see the teams and you can work out what they're thinking at any, each moment. And sometimes they even surprise you with just how well they're thinking out the next few steps. Hidasang is going to land a hook here, but he doesn't know Mercer and Slatter on their way. Razzle's going to join the Braves. Mercer dives forward, gobbled up. You can see Razzle now with the Onslaught of Shadows going in. Mercer with the thick skin, kicked back by Schlatter. And Razzle, though, able to heal him up. The double Ravage from Groot, Groot as Mercer goes down. Upset on a killing spree now. Neon will fall as well. BTO a little late to the party, and Humanoids already helped his team take two. Schlatter has the flash, and Fnatic once again find the upper hand. Initially, it's looking like Hillisang's getting caught off guard, and unlike what I would have done, he doesn't flash over the wall. He's just smarter. He waits out the play. Brings Upset in with a Lantern, and Rasok joins the fray with Ghost. Humanoid joining as well from the mid lane, and just like that, four versus three situation in favor of Fnatic before B2 is able to join it. Let's have a look at it once again, because he hooks onto Neon, plays them away, gets the Lantern as we talked about, dodges out of the Mercer, knock up, and just like that, 3v3 situation is going to turn into a 4v3 once Humanoid joins the three as well. Meteo, he's kind of stuck just whoosh, watching because there's no way for him to join the fight right now. And those scattered fights is where Akali really shines. You know, we've seen it from Meteo in the past. We see it here from Humanoid as well. If you can join the fight a little late when the cooldowns are used, when the CC is used, you just have free reign to open up hell on your opponents. And every time Misfits have tried to make a play, Fnatic have been there answering. Rift Held now used in this bottom lane. 2,000 gold delete for Fnatic and down to about 1.6k, but it's going to extend as this Rift Held charges in. Hillisang still has the flash, still has the hook, but it just hits onto Mercer, uh, to the Neon. Wait, did that just skip through Mercer? I don't know what happened there, but they made a great use of it. Hillisang's Hillisang going to die! They, uh, all right, well, close to being a Dignitas dive. Not what we're going to be getting in this situation, but I mean, you take that. Neon goes down, first two goes over to the side of Fnatic, and they can just even start off the Ocean Drake now for themselves, picking up that first Drake. I was just so sure that Mercer was body blocking that hook. Hillisang, a full Angelina Jolie cosplay there from one to just bending the bullet around, managing to hit it onto Neon, and now first Dragon of the game for Fnatic and continue to extend their advantage. Upset 4-0-1 on this Aphelios. Still unkilled by 14 minutes in this game. A record he has held, I believe, for the entirety of the season. It's honestly quite impressive, especially because usually when we see AD carries not dying, it's mostly just because they're, they're just farming. They're not getting much done. But Upset is the catalyst of Fnatic quite often. So the fact that you have a guy who's barely dying, but getting so much damage done, getting so many kills as well, and just all in all, as an individual, is showing so much mechanical prowess. It's just super impressive, and also why we say he's the best in the EU right now as an AD carry. He definitely is, and 
And we'll say he's on his way to a record as well. So far, has only died eight times in the 17 games he has played this spring. Before, well, if he rounds it out by not dying, he will beat Reckless's record of 13 deaths in spring 2018. Upset continues to find advantages and Fnatic continue to find advantages and there's the longest Lantern you'll see today. Neon falls once again, Slatton trying to do what he can but Mercer's already dead and Slatton will be able to dive away for a second but the five point strike finds its mark as Fnatic have just shut Misfits entirely out of this game. Completely, and it's just going to get even more dire because Riftail, the second one, is just going to be respawning in a couple minutes as well. That's going to be another neutral objective that you're going to be wanting to contest, but actually as Misfits right now, you don't want to, right? You don't have the proper capabilities for it. And while Medic, which is talking about upset, well, let's have a look at what actually happened in the fight in between, because Razzok catches Neon Mercer. He's trying to come in with the Abyssal dive to this... gobble up Neon for safety, but the rest of Fnatic, they're just so fast. They just get the things done. And Mercer, well, he's just stuck in between four members. Slatter will get taken down as well with a beautiful five-point strike from Humanoid. Credit as well to Razzle. He's been so on the ball with his positioning. He's been involved in nine of his team's 12 kills and he's always been in the right position at the right time. As we have a brief moment to breathe, and I say brief, let's talk about exactly what this game means in terms of the total standings. Because right now, obviously, Rogue slightly ahead of Fnatic because they've had one extra game. You bring Thanks. out a graphic, you know a kill is oh, going to come through, Medic, that's how it works. Hexagon made him going down onto one of TP coming in from Fnatic, so they look to save their top lane of Humanoid here. Slatten down, here it next up, as he is hit in the face by Wonder. And I think at some point, you know, we just, we talk about the graphics and let the kills happen in the background. You know, Fnatic 14 to 4. 5,000, 4,500 gold ahead right now. But, you know, you know production control. gave me a tool, and I actually think it's quite fitting right oh, now. Is it? If okay. you weren't here, I was talking about the Telestrators. This is you for majority of these games. You see your <laughs> graphic instead. You're like, hmm, there's a Monka team fight hmm. happening right now, but Monka look at this graphic. Hmm. Well, well, it's awfully well, actually, nice, isn't it? So thank you for Speaking of which, let's have a look one. at the current standings. So. <laughs> Rogue in first place, obviously they played one more game. If Fnatic win this, they tie with Rogue at 13 and four. And you might wonder, well, how do we break that tie? Well, do I have the graphic for you? Rogue and Fnatic would tie at 13 and four. Their head-to-head -head is one and one. Rogue obviously going undefeated in the first half of the season. However, the final tiebreak metric we have is who has won more games in the second half. Currently, Fnatic are two games ahead of Rogue in wins in the second half of the season, meaning if Fnatic and Rogue are at the same win-loss at the end of the LEC Spring Split, Fnatic would get the upper spot, and in this case, that would be first. And I was looking at the Rift Herald play instead there, and it seems like Misfits finally able to pick up a neutral objective, although we said we didn't really feel like it could be a neutral objective contest in that one, but Misfits, they're on the tempo. They get it for themselves. But here's the thing about second Rift Herald. You don't have plating to get that instant injection of gold. Luckily, you have inner turrets to fight for now, which does give you 600 gold. But the problem is, if you're not the team with the tempo advantage, if you're not the one who's pushing in the lanes, you rarely ever get to set up a proper rift yeah. held, and you barely ever get the proper gold injection. It becomes very difficult for Misfits to find a way to use that gold. Obviously, they've already taken the tier one in the top lane and the bottom lane as well, so really only the mid lane, their option. But how do you push out a mid lane if you're Support is once again being caught. Thick skin available, flash as well. Neon tries to join the party, but Mercer will flash away. They may turn their attentions over to Neon as the TP comes in for Misfits. They're looking to try and turn this fight around. It will be a 4v3 in a second. Neon almost down. Razzle's chasing him out, and he will finally pick up that kill. The Lantern down for him, but the Hexagon made him stops his ability to retreat. Two for one in favor of Fnatic. Yeah, still working out in favor of Fnatic. Schlatter and Can W over still has the kick available if they want to look for a fight. Do you want to fight this? Upset is sitting on a Gale Force, a BF Sword, a Vamp Scepter, and a Crit Cloak. I don't think you do. And Misfits agree with me as Humanoid continues to push in a side lane. I think it's you agreeing with Misfits, to be fair, but on the other side, I should say, <laughs> Humanoid is attacking the inner turret. Mercer comes down to stop him. Not usually the solo laner we want to see, but once again, it just works out in the favor of Natty. And you can already see it, objective bounties alive. It's about picking up these turrets you can, it's about picking up the drakes you can get access to as well, because you are 5k behind, nearing the 20 minute mark in the game. And a lot of those, that gold, and a lot of the kills in this game have come from Fnatic focusing the bottom lane. It's something Ooh, they did it, so well it. in Slatter the past. Slatter, the kick. He's gonna get the kick back, and a little bit of a graphical bug there, but Upset did 
find his maker in the mid lane. Rift Herald now an option as well. Misfits could get this objective bounty, get themselves a little bit more gold as upset falls, making that nine deaths this season. Four more, and he's only tied with Reckless for the least deaths ever in an LEC season. Honestly, the most brilliant setup you can have there. Huge from Slatten finding that pick, and upset honestly a little bit greedy being that far out without the proper vision set around it. They pick up a kill, which was a shutdown. They get value of the Rift Held, they get the mid lane turret, and they get the neutral objective in the Drake that also gives the objective bounties. And we said just not too long ago, actually one minute ago, Fnatic will up 5k. Well, that's only 2k now. Well, 2 and yeah. 500. Well, uh, however you want to say it. Uh, yeah, 2.5k. We'll go with that one. But uh, uh, it's now 3k, but we're, um, we're going to ignore your maths. We're casters, not mathematicians, okay? Oh, you're gonna you're gonna get the well actually face out again? <laughs> no, oh. not this time around. But you I, know, I I got it as a threat if I okay. need it. I will say though, that's 750 extra gold just from the bounties. The mid lane tower gives you 250, an extra dragon gives you 500, I believe. So it's a huge bit of advantage. And she might be less than 500 for normal dragons. VTO is caught out. Razzle chased him down. Mercer's gonna gobble him up and try and spin him out, but he spins him back into the middle of Fnatic and the Infernum does its work. Great hook. Great hook once again. We've said that many times this game as Fnatic find three and once again, the gold lead back up to about 5,000. It looks good. You get one nice play from Misfits and then Fnatic is like, okay, time to try out five members. Let's go. Okay, boys, get the team fight, get three members taking out and 21 minutes into the game, uncontested Baron. Fnatic should be running away with the game with this one for sure. Let's have a look at it again, because Rasok, he is actually quite cheeky. Not spotted out on any vision, they spot out Mercer, immediately channels the teleport. The rest of the members are around, and it's just so well coordinated. It's a choke point where there's just not a numbers advantage from the side of Misfits, and despite a great kick from Slaughter trying to disengage it, Hilly still manages to find the death sentence for I, Misfits. This fanatic death ball is something we've seen so many times oh, over the Darren years. Oh, become like, so good at it. And it's the reason why I always say that they are the best in EU right now. Because yep. once we get to see this team in a best of five setting, we get to see this all the time. And it's not only just like, all right, let's have an assassin in the mid lane. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a twisted fate. Sometimes it's, it's a control mage as well. There's so many different paths that we've seen this team take. Sometimes it's an enchanter with Renata. Sometimes it's Pike. Sometimes it's Kraken's weak side top. And I know we're saying this a lot, but this team is just so phenomenally good. I may say that, and then Humanoid just getting caught. I mean, Humanoid went a little bit deep here. Does have to try that strike, but Rasok's on the chase as well, and Neon deleted where he stands. Mercer next on the menu. Hexagold made him. We'll lock Humanoid under the tower on. Slaughter's Shadow's coming out as well. Razor brings him it back. The play will do the same as will the hook. Kick back from Slatter, and he looks for Hillisang. Upset tanking the tower, still surviving. BTO's gonna join the fight a little bit late. Fnatic may have overstayed. Humanoid's still alive in this, though and he will get out with the Dark Passage. Fnatic, they dived a little deep, they were a little greedy. But there was no Balrog awaiting them. Misfits unable to find a kill. Yeah, an upset in that situation was actually just stuck auto-attacking the turret. He didn't actually hit the champions. I think that's why they got to live for so long as well and why the fight became a little bit dicey. But nonetheless, Wonder was able to pick up the inner turret in the bot lane and it's still more gold being injected into Fnatic. They still have the Baron Bob active can go for the reset, make their way out on the map once again. And as you can already see, almost 4K has been distributed to Fnatic. That's a very strong performance from Fnatic against the team that they may very well face in the first round of playoffs. Both these teams, of course, already in the top four. Fnatic still battling for that first place with Rogue. If they finish on equal win-loss, Fnatic will take first and then get their pick of probably Misfits and G2 of the two remaining top four teams. And the question is, who do you pick? Do you pick G2 for the storylines? Do you do it for the Kings, for the legacy, for the dynasties? Or do you say, well, we literally just thrashed Misfits in week eight. We could do that again three times in a row. And it's a quick and easy day for Fnatic in playoffs. Still, of course, three weeks away. We have a short break before we get there, but Fnatic looking very strong. Jack of all trades, it seems, with their composition, master of some. And now Misfits trying to find a way back into this game. But once again, Hillisang, He's so Wait, good. I mean, he's a great player, but that's not normal. Uh, can someone we get a computer should check, check? His PC. Yeah, someone should check Hillisang's PC. Maybe he's not hacking, but maybe he's using game deficit. Yeah, maybe, maybe. You never know. And they, they're not even playing on two lanes. They just know they can siege it down because they have Wonder's poke. They can just go all in with Razzok here. Razzok brings VTO back. Mercer will gobble him up and spear him out. Mercer's still alive. Humanoid diving in. Stopwatch used. 
inhibitor down. Humanoid will get out with a perfect execution. And the Gale Force from Neon enough to get a shut down. A bit of gold on the Jinx. Never hurt Misfits. And it may hurt Fnatic a little bit on that push. Yeah, great stuff once again there from Misfits. Actually striking back a little bit. And that's that's kind of been the story, unfortunately, for, for them this game. It's like they're never the one committing to the correct plays, but they find the punish every now and then. We saw it from Schlatten in the mid lane. We see it now where Fnatic is overstepping a little bit, but all in all, that's Copium. Fnatic, they're still getting away with the biggest lead. They pick up the mid lane or top lane inhibitor. They can try and get the reset through, but Misfits might be able to pick up their second dragon of the game, giving them a little bit gold once again with the objective bounties. Yeah, Razzle's on his way. It's 500 gold extra for the dragon. You see everyone pops up with 100 there. And, uh, you, actually, if you look at it, Neon, he's 1-6-2. And he's only 200 gold behind upset right now on this Jinx. Almost at that 11k mid lane, there's a bit of a deficit. Top lane, there's even more so. 3,000 gold between the two top laners, but we'll see how much work Wonder can do with the Shock Blast in these team fights. Super Minions pushing in at the top lane as well, makes it difficult for Misfits to respond. You can see Razork down towards the bottom side. He can get to the team very quickly uh, with his Ghost and obviously being Hecarim. He's a pretty fast horse. Humanoid could be down there as well because he has the teleport. And I actually expect that is a change Fnatic might make in the next couple of moments. For the moment, though, they are going to group as five, all clustered around this mid lane tier two. Yeah, they know they can just commit to a fight even on the tower if they'd like to. We just saw it up into top side. Now they don't have the Baron of minions, but once again, they do have that top side inhibitor. And that means if they're patient enough, well, they are just going to be stacking up. Misfit's attention will be drawn to it. As you mentioned yourself, going for that bot side turret might be good as well. Another thing is with the side lanes as we do have a slight pause coming out now at 13 minutes and uh, 13, 31 minutes and one second. The game was paused by Misfits for a potential connection issue. The league officials are still working to resolve that, and we are pausing at 26.50 to maintain a delay for competitive integrity. We'll have a look and keep you updated as soon as possible. Obviously, unfortunate to have a pause, but we want everything to be as above board as possible in these games. It's still a big game for both Misfits and Fnatic, and the fact it got to 31 minutes, I will say, is slightly surprising to me. I think Fnatic had the, had a few options to close it out from here. I think it's because they're so overzealous as well. It's just like going for every play they can. It's the pressure you're facing when you're playing against Fnatic, but it's also their strongest suit. Um, so obviously, they still end up going down with a few members. Misfits picking up that Drake, for example, just now is because that one member overstepped, Neon picked up a kill. Mm -hmm. You get to have the reset before your opponents do. But in the grand scheme of things, it's still Fnatic very much in control of it, of this game. And very much in control of the way they have been. At least, I, probably for the majority of the split, definitely in the last few weeks, Fnatic have looked a cut above almost every opposition they face. They've dropped a few games here and there. You know, you look at the XL game, the Astralis game, I believe they dropped exactly. as well. But they've never looked like they are truly outmanned on the Rift. That's the thing. Fnatic at their best. That, I mean, honestly, they're just a joy watching. And, and it, it comes down to not only the way they're playing as a team, it also just comes down to that they have five talented individuals in that roster that just gels really nicely together. Yeah, I still see commentary now and then be like, oh, Rasak's falling a little bit behind, but he's still doing great with the teammates he's yeah. got around him. And I think it's not only that, it's also the way that Fnatic actually plays the map because most teams will just set one um, support out on the map, try and see if they can get something done. But the way they do it with Helisang quite often is that like, okay, let's get bot lane priority, let's push the turret in, then a slow push is going to be building up, then both members are going to be moving into the mid lane. We get mid lane pro, even in a lane where you shouldn't have mid pro, like Akali versus Victor, then move it back down towards the bot side, and then all of a sudden you're stuck with the enemy mid laner who should have pro, but doesn't have it, and you can just commit to a play on bot side. I think they're playing the map really well all the time, and every time Time I'm sat doing my VOT reviews of teams, I'm like, Fnatic, God. Like, and I know, like, oh my God, just Bayern's caster. But it, I mean, I mean it, end, it's it, not it's biased like, I'm, to I'm celebrate to good, good League of Legends. Exactly. That's not biased at all. You can, uh, your VOD views on your Twitch channel, right? Twitch.tv forward slash Goldberg. Like is it Goldberg? I, I just just your name? Yeah, real cool. Goldberg. Actually, really good VOD reviews. Real Goldberg <sighs> on Twitch. We're going to hand it over to the analyst desk to break down what's been happening so far, and we'll be right back. Praise Good League of Legends. You're biased. <laughs> How I'm could you? How could you? Oh, I'm so sad we have a pause, uh, as per usual. Mm -hmm. But um, we're going to hope that everything gets sorted and that we can have uh, a nice game to get back into. So let's talk about what's happened so far. It's been an onslaught of, uh, well, Hecarim, but mostly <laughs> Fnatic in general. Um, let's take a look at the draft. I was actually quite surprised by the mid lane 
picks and what came yeah. out because it's a bit of a different look. Still control Meiji for VTO, but then the Akali came out as a response from Humanoid. There was a lot of weird things in the draft because I was talking to Niski a little bit about it and they had last pick for mid and we kind of thought, well, they could go for some kind of Galio to roam around and help the Jace and their side lanes, which are winning. They could go for an Azir, which is a Humanoid stock standard into the Victor, just out range, out farm would make a lot of sense into Victor, Jinx, Tom Kench, of course. The later the game goes, you can match the scaling that they have. But the Akali playmaker is maybe they just want to kind of show that Humanoid is Humanoid, right? He can play roaming, he can play mages, he can play playmaking. We haven't seen too much of his Akali this year. I remember last year and the year before, he was known for his Akali. So it's his bread and butter. And yeah, he's doing fantastic this game. I mean, the early bot dive is where it all fell apart for Misfits. But the capitalization Fnatic's doing across side lanes with Humanoid just roaming around, collapsing on everyone, uh, it's, it's great to see. Yeah, it is. Aphelios Trash, of course, is... Uh... A very scary duo, regardless of who's it's, playing it, but <laughs> it's worse now. Aphelios Thrash at two champions will always stand out to me, because I watch yeah. a lot of LCK, and T1, mm -hmm. if you give Gumayushi Aphelios or Carrier Thrash, you've basically lost the draft and uh -huh. the game just straight single-handedly with those champions. Uh, so Ups and Hilly just putting on a clinic on it. Um, I mean, the early bot dive really helped them out. The only worry I have for Misfits' draft is they don't have that much playmaking mm -hmm. when it comes to early to mid to even late game. I guess they're kind of waiting for you to come into them a bit, because yes, the Lee Sin can find kicks, yes, the Camille can look to single out a, a Target, but the Jinx Tom Kench Victor doesn't really do much in the early stages, so they're just kind of there to sit scaling. The good news for Misfits is there hasn't been that many dragons taken just yet. Mm -hmm. I think there's only two drakes around 26, 27 minutes in, which is great for them because they want to ramp up and scale, so they're not forced to walk into you around these dragon fights. So you're saying there's a chance? So I'm saying they have a chance, <laughs> of course. I mean, I think there's always a chance when you have um, these two champions from Arcane. They're my favorites, <laughs> and they scale so fantastically well. Um, um, so yeah, I mean, once I get five, six items, I'll pop off. Yeah, uh, but I do like from Misfits also, uh, as we are heading into those players for them as well, the fact that they said, all right, come on, we're going to have to put Shlatan on uh, Lee Sin, which he loves, but is going to mm -hmm. have to require him to make the plays. Also, Hirit, who I think has been more quiet than he was last year, especially, for Misfits, is now on a Camille, of course, a uh, favorite of any top laner, but it also has to be played to a T in team fights or in those side lanes. So it looks like they're looking to flex their muscles or trying to make him work against a very good team, which is always good. Unfortunately, they've been run over in the early game. Yeah, they have. And the problem I think they have in the early game is the Lee Sin lacks setup, right? When you think of Lee Sin, it's very good with things like Twisted Fate and Rise, Leona, things that it can walk into. Even Renekton top, as much as I dislike the champion now, it has some kind of CC You're to allow the Lee Sin. You're also a Renekton hater. Now I'm a Renekton <laughs> hater. LS has converted me in 2022. I mean, the champion with the item nerfs and all the yeah. different changes coming in has just fallen off a little bit. But I think that the Lee Sin needs setup somewhere. And Camille can give you some kind of setup towards level six, but in the early stages, not so much. I think the early 2v2 is losing because Jace gets top push. So if you look across the lanes, it feels like Fnatic get the push in most of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what they've done. And I think they've pushed their advantage as well, also securing the Baron. Uh, this is a pause, Phil. So we are going to talk about Hillisang again. We also did at the top of the block, but we have some highlights of uh, his stretch play overall. This is a, a legacy pick for oh, Hilly, yeah. uh, for any support, but I think especially for Hilly. Can we just highlight how well he plays this? He knows Mercer's dead, blind hooks the bush to make sure he catches Neon as well, who had flash up, so probably didn't expect him to actually aim towards the bush. I mean, yeah. Hillisang was basically everywhere. That unlocked bot, mid was unlocked as well, especially when mid has no flash and you're playing Akali Victor. Kind of a matchup where Akali tends to get pushed in by ranged champions in the early stages, but I mean, yeah, once she hits level 6, she's always going to have kill pressure. If they lose flash, they can't walk up and punish you as much. And Hillisang's lantern engages this game have been fantastic. We had this one now where he's just kind of getting upset into the fight and they win out on the bot 3v3. Um, I think Yeah. it also hooks towards... I remember there was one in the dragon pit where he lanterned the dragon pit, hooked the Krux, pulled upset like halfway across the map. Maybe it's this one here. Uh, yeah, I think it might be. Yeah, look what he does here. He's going to hook the Krux and then he's going to lantern the dragon pit. And that pulls Upset into a fight from a different dimension. Wow. And that's how they clean up. So Hillisang's Thresh is just always a treat to watch. Yeah, it's nice. It also really enables, I think, uh, what we've come to expect from Hilly is that he has these very forward calls, right? Mm -hmm. That maybe are ahead of the play a little bit. And that works when you can just uh, get yourself in there and pull in your uh, allies. Yeah, and the early leads just... I think Razork is a player that is very momentum-based, from what I've seen at least. I mean, the early games when it falls apart, he relies, of course, on his team to get him ahead, and then he stabilizes the game that way. But when he's ahead, especially I remember Viego games where he's just going in a lot of the time, Zombie 5, when he's on the Hecarim, he's just jumping in with no fear. That's just natural, I think, for players when they're ahead, they're a lot more confident, but I see that a lot more, especially from Razork. Yeah, Razork, when he was on Misfits, uh, he particularly also last year, he had a couple of games where I think it was against Bipo, and Bipo had some of his first games mm -hmm. in the jungle, and he put 
Razrog behind, incredibly, but Razrog stayed calm and then just caught up, which is of course not what the jungle XP and whatnot. But uh, and got back into the game and then played a really instrumental role in teamfight. Mm -hmm. So he's not that tiltable, no, really, which is good. Not. Speaking of Whippo, it's funny to see how fanatics kind of changed. I mean, you remember like the Hillisang Whippo duo yeah. was the ones always going, never done, run yeah. away, always, and they're probably like in their in their meetings for the games. Like guys, you have a flash button. That button is only allowed to go forwards. We're only going in, and there was so much more bloodbaths and fighting and Whippo forcing. Feels like they're a lot more kind of quiet now. Hillisang still has that spirit in him, but they're a little bit more tame. I wonder if that's kind of Humanoid coming in saying, guys, chill out. I just saw Humanoid dive like... Yeah, okay, first. he does have his moments as well. I remember, have you seen that video on YouTube where it's Hillisang doesn't listen to his team for three minutes straight? No. And then like, they're in a Worlds game, I can't remember who it was against, and the whole team is like saying, guys, give up Drake, give up Drake, it's fine, just leave it. And Hillisang's just walking in his brown mommy five saying, no, 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 I'm contesting, I'm contesting, <laughs> throwing cues. He's like, they're giving the dragon, and his whole team's running away. And he's like, okay, fine, I'll back off. That's uh, exactly what uh, we heard, you need to trust him, is what mm. Niski said. If you don't trust him and he doesn't trust you, you're not going to get along. Nope. Just trust his calls. Um, but about Hillisang, unfortunately, um, he hooks at 31 minutes and one second into the game, and then the game was paused by, oh no, Hilla, ignore that, the Hilla Sang hooks was, Hilla Sang previous part. talking points. Ignore what I said. At 31 minutes, one second into the game, uh, it was paused by Misfits for a potential connection issue, and league officials are still working to resolve that, and meanwhile, we are going to fill the time until we get there. Um, regardless, let's maybe go back to our mid lane tier list a little bit, mm -hmm. um, as it was... It a, it's a ranking, actually, as someone on mm -hmm. Twitter aptly pointed out. And we only did the top five. So here we go. Uh, this is Niski's list. Humanity Fitio, Larson, Caps, Perks. Dom just had a tweet on this as well, um, where he said, well, if Fitio is not on this roster, they actually really don't win as many games as they have. True. And I know that Neon gave an interview, I believe it was on day one, where he said, um, I think it's it's understandable that Fitio gets just so much of the praise because he is playing phenomenally, but Mursa is always is also doing great. Uh, I've been putting up numbers, which is true, but I, it's, I don't know. I don't think that much happens in that roster or in the game. I think you see it here, right? Yeah. But I mean, the whole team it's got shut down. It's but. the kind of like stars in your eyes. VTO is always like center stage, center camera popping yeah. off. And as much as the jungle spot help it out, he does it so often that it just stands out so much, right? I think he has like nine or 10 pogs right now throughout the entire split. He's doing an incredible job. I agree, if he wasn't on the roster, I'm not sure how strong this roster would even be. And I think the problem he's having this game is he's playing a mage. Yeah. And when you're playing things like a mage, yes, you can win your lane and get a CS lead, but you can't dictate the pace of the game as much unless you get really far ahead with kills or an early tower to move around the map. When you're playing things like Akali, Silas, and uh, TF Rise, champions that can either push or drop waves and move around the map, that's when you can start to dictate the pace of how the map plays out. So playing something like Victor hinders that a little bit, but of course, VTO kind of naturally does that in the mid to late game. And he loves Victor as well. I believe it's one of his favorite champions as well. As we scale up into this game, maybe hopefully for Misfits, mm -hmm. if they do get there, is there more possibilities? Because there are Victors in the late game that can completely take over a team fight, but it's going to be quite difficult to play against this Team oh yeah, definitely will be, especially, I mean, if the Aphelios is ahead, the Hecarim's diving on you, the Akali's diving on you, there's got to be a lot of peel. The good news is they have a Tam Kench, and a lot of the times people think of peel as something that's very defensive. I think the best form of defense sometimes is offense, right? When you have your own threats to stop them walking up, Camille, Lee Sin will be the threats on upset, so he needs to be very careful at how far he walks up. And of course, if they can use Camille ult or Lee Sin kick to disengage a bit, that's also really good for VTO to buy some space. Him and Neon, who Neon is quite far behind right now, I think yeah. he's like one six, one and 7 He's been having a tough game playing Jinx into these champions when the enemy team has temp on the map catching you when you're trying to catch side waves or anything like this you're always going to die because you're so immobile uh, but yeah when it comes to team fights it needs to be very coordinated vto can't just play akali and do his own thing and just kill everyone and you press tab you look at the other half of the fight and like wait we won and uh, your mid laner's like oh they're all dead yeah 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 um i mean i, I think this is a done deal to be completely honest with the way mm. fanatic has been playing but there's just that little voice inside Surely me that's not. saying do you remember what happened versus g2 mm -hmm. and i think they've earned that respect that we need to give them at least a chance chance uh, yeah. to show us that they can, but I think it's going to be an incredibly as, difficult. As much as Misfits in that comeback deserve a lot of praise for staying strong and punishing the enemy team. When you're ahead at that point, especially as G2, it's on your, it's on you if you lose that game. It's not the enemy team making yeah. good plays. It's like you are making mistakes to give them an, uh, some kind of lead when you're 10k gold up. So I think if Fnatic were to lose this game, then it's on them. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take a look at the standings as we are still in this pause because let's talk a little bit about the teams that have already locked. Playoffs, Excel, G2 Esports, Misfits, Fnatic, Rogue. Um, and talk about kind of the best of fives that we may see, but maybe not going as deep kind of the level. Um, 
Lore asked Comp in the interview after the road game, what do you think the level is and what do you think the level is going to be of playoffs? And he said as much as, it's not that one team is much stronger than all like the other teams mm -hmm. and it could be a pretty open fight, which goes in stark contrast to what we heard from Yamato yesterday in terms of Fnatic. But I wager that there is a, a change as it's also uh, shown right now in the standings between Rogue and Fnatic on one page. Mm -hmm. For me, XL. Yep. Uh, misfits, I think, in a best of five, we'll see. And then G2, who seems to be ramping up and as that, of late. That's the thing, ramping up towards the end of playoffs. I think a lot of teams have different improvement curves, whether you come out the gate swinging and your curve slows down towards the mid half of the split or the later half, or you come in very slow and it ramps up quite quickly towards the end. I think a very good example of a team that might have the ramp up towards the end is Vitality, although they lost yeah. in those next two weeks of practice. Best of fives is where they're always going to shine. The funny thing to me about the standing series, if Fnatic win, they lock top two, which yeah. means they're guaranteed first or second and of course if you're in third place or fourth place like we talked about before if rogue choose for example misfits then fanatic get g2 which is the obvious choice if xl make it into the top four maybe they're the obvious choice over g2 right so I'm a bit worried for the 3-4 because no matter who you are, you're probably facing Fnatic because Rogue's always going to choose the easier option. Uh, so that's the kind of scary thing of allowing Fnatic to have that top two place and you can't stop them and push them to third, get second maybe and try to deny it. The good thing is that we have uh, two weeks actually between the last game of the regular season and the playoffs. So I hope that that can give some of the teams a little bit of space to experiment. I think there's also a new patch coming in mm -hmm. clearly. So. We'll see. Um, since we are filling anyways, let's go down the line a little bit. Let's talk about Rogue. Uh, Rogue, who I think always fights with ghosts of things that happened in the past in yeah. terms of, oh, you didn't win that final or this or that, but they are still an incredibly, incredibly stable team. But is it going to be enough to fight for that highest honor with how the roster has been playing now? I think the important thing is they have two best of fives to do it, right? They normally do have right. two best of fives because they always finish in the top four. But as much as Rogue are haunted by the ghosts of best of fives every now and then, and they have made one finals, it's a very different roster, especially when you dictate jungle. Like jungle decides how your team plays. You look at Rogue last year, they play for jungle. This time around, Rogue 2022, Jungle plays for the rest of the team. So it's a very different beast in best of fives. But Malrang has shown already signs of flexibility where he's played things like Hecarim. Although he does have a similar style while well, he'll gank you level three, even though he gets invaded on and he'll find creative pathings. He is a player who in Dumb One, when he was subbing in, was playing things like Rumble in the jungle, which is more so farming orientated, right? So I feel like Malrang is going to be flexible in those best of fives. Yes, you can read him, but they need that versatility, which is maybe what they lacked last year. And I think that's super interesting uh, because we keep looking at it uh, from a standpoint of, oh, like, how is he going to be shut down? But you should mm -hmm. be looking at it from, hey, how is he going to be versatile and bring this rogue roster to new heights together with all the other members that are really having a great season? Comp is a, is a great example. Larson is a great example. They've played towards Odo Wamne as well. So there's no reason to be afraid if you're a rogue fan, I don't yeah, think. Yeah, as much as, they're, again, they're one-dimensional maybe towards the jungle in play style. I think that the, the players they have around them are very good facilitators, right? Odo Wamne is a player that we've seen can play carry top Tops, tank tops, whatever you need, even a carry on a weak side. We saw an Akshan game where he's kind of the strong point on the map, but he's playing safe. We've seen it in mid, we've seen it in bot, so they're very versatile. Thank you for that. We are going to get back into the game. Luckily, so Fnatic versus Misfits, to remind you, at 31 minutes, one second into the game, the game was paused by Misfits for a potential connection issue, and our league officials have resolved the issue and will be back into game right now. So, casters, take it away. Thank you very much, Shox and Kajal. Absolutely smurfing the pause there as well. Great job by both of you. We are here and we are ready to continue Fnatic versus Misfits. Fnatic in a very strong lead, but Misfits have been fighting back over the last few minutes. It's been a few picks here and there, but I would definitely say that Fnatic is still in control of these games that we're going to be entering in just a little bit. I mean, for Misfits, it, it, it's very hard. They're pushed into their own base. They need to look for these picks to get some shutdowns to get back into the game. Objective bounties are live for them as well. I mean, the only good thing for Misfits is that Fnatic haven't really stacked up any Drakes, so this is not Soul coming up in just three minutes for Fnatic. Uh, but either way, you are going to be having to contest around a Baron in just one minute. Let's just quickly remind everyone of where we are. We are 27 minutes into the game. There's an 8,000 gold lead for Misfits. Two Dragons to one in Misfits' favor, but Fnatic have control of basically the entire map. Three items on upset. Humanoid sitting at two and a half, almost got his Rabadons complete. Three items as well on Wonder, who has about a 3,000 gold lead over Hirit by himself. Oh, Fnatic on the front foot, looking for Neon. Oh, holy! I was about to say a very rude word, and I'm going to hold that one back, but that you is better. a lot of damage onto Neon. 
And, you know, that's the thing they're dealing with right now for Misfits. They have to face check, try and get in and get some control right now. But you just take a look at the vision control around the barrier area right now, you know? It's purely Fnatic favored. Pink water coming out from multiple fronts. And there you have it. Thank you, Observers. Barely any vision from Misfits. Actually, there's no vision. Let's say it how it is. None at all. And Upset obviously can play a little bit more aggressively here because he knows he's got Hillasang and that Lantern to get him out of danger. Baron now spawned. Ready upset with guns. Crescendum. White and green now, but that's just going to do a ton of damage. It's the white one you really want to shred through a Baron quickly. Schlatan in a position to steal this one. 6,000 HP on the Baron. Humor in a good flank as well. Hillasang on that front line. BTO chucked down to a third of his HP as Razor chases him down. Wonder unstoppable as Mercer falls. And we'll see what BTO can do. Not much is the answer. Humanoid diving forward. Neon chunked out once again. And Powder looking to turn into exactly that, okay, but has the time on, to open up. Slapton diving back. Neon getting excited. And that's two. The shutdown coming in. Fnatic overstep. They walked into the Hextech rockets. And Neon with open arms welcome them to death. And just like that, there's 30 second death timers. They have a mid lane minion wave. They can just tank this. No, no, this doesn't happen two times in a row. There's no way I Misfits win it from here. It. You want to know why? Still. There's no way Misfits win it from here because we know at 31 minutes there was a pause and we're only 29 minutes into the game. I hate board. this. I hate this. Why'd you have to remind me of that? I got so hyped for a second. <laughs> Medic, I hate you! <laughs> Let's have another look at this fight, though, because it starts off so well for Fnatic. It really does, and I think in the end, it just ends up being Fnatic over Chasing, because they've already split apart Misfits completely. Mercer goes down immediately. B2 sure to follow after. And here comes the breaking point where they go too far forward. No one gets access to the B2. Slatsen, as she says, is beautiful kick on what may be his signature champion at this point. And then it's just reset after reset with Neon picking up the kills, finding upset with the slow as well. Double kill. And after that, it's just down to chase Hilly. And this is the power of Jinx. She, if she ever gets excited, if she's ever even or even just a little bit behind in a fight, she can take over a battle. Now only 2,200 gold between these two teams. Fnatic facing down a Baron, facing down a possible soul point if they lose this dragon. They have, once again, gained vision control, but there is a single control wall behind them that could be TP2. And by Fnatic spent so much Hirit. time trying to go into the jungle to get Drake control, but they completely forgot about the mid lane wave they had. And they don't have the best wave clear. They have no control mage. Upset is the best one for wave clear. He's not around, and you don't want to walk forward with him either. So Misfits, they should be able to pick up this inhibitor. And with more minion waves coming through, they can still try and siege for the inhibitor if they want to, but they see it. Five seconds on the Inferno Drake. Soul point it what would, would be for Misfits. And Fnatic, they're not posturing as if they want to contest it, although they can regroup if they'd like. Razzok, not spotted at all here. They knew he may be somewhere in the area, but he wasn't seen by that Scryer's Bloom. TP. TP's come in. Dragon secured. Counter TP used by Misfits. Trying to answer this one. Razzle looking for the onslaught of Shadows going in. The kick back onto Schlatt and he's low. Humanoid dives onto the back line, but Neon still very healthy. Stopwatch by Humanoid. Fnatic now advancing. Misfits looking for the re-engage. VTO locked up. He'll be shut down. Misfits lose one. And we just got caught up with that pause. Misfits though still have Baron. They got the dragon. They are one dragon away from Infernal Soul. Inhibitor open in the mid lane. And However, Fnatic have the inhibitor open in top. And at this point in the game, that's where the gold lead really doesn't mean all too much. When it's a 3k gold lead, you have four items on Nia. That's more than enough. VTO started to stack up as well, three items on him. And if you get caught off guard now as Fnatic, but just one member get kicked into these damage dealers on Misfits, you will just get one shot. This game started out so Fnatic dominates it. It looked like they were just going to run away with Misfits despite Misfits finding a few picks here and there. But just like that, Misfit turned the team fight situation in the mid lane into a Baron, into what we see currently. And for what feels like the first time this split as well, it's not off the back of VTO. Hear it and Slashan looking to do something in the top side, can't get anything, but VTO has been nullified this game. Basically, hasn't been able to influence fights as he usually does for Misfits. It's been Neon, it's been Schlatten, it's been Hira, it's been Mercer stepping up and really putting VTO in a position where he can survive through fights. If a word were to spring to mind about this Misfits team, it's resilience. You look back to Misfits as a 
organization 2017 when they fought skt at worlds it was resilience they kept fighting and they kept fighting and they got oh so close last year in playoffs they were one game away from making it to worlds and here we see again misfits resilience coming to the fore they were down and out against g2 they were down and out in this game and although they may not look like the best team in the league somehow they keep managing to fight back from untenable situations it is only the regular season. They are only fighting for a possible first spot into playoffs, but what a fight they are putting on. Definitely, this looked like a game they should not be in, but now, 33 minutes into the game, they're seeching down towards the inner turret on the bot side. Mid lane inhibitor still naked, but no one is pressuring. They're five members down here. I don't think they can siege it without the Baron, though. Misfits, they need to play two lanes in this situation. Inhibitor is open, but they have to scatter after this situation, and just like that, they lose their tempo. It's now onto Fnatic to create the next play. They're going to be pushing out the bot side. They're going to be moving Humanoid into the mid lane. And they're just going to be setting up a little bit of vision. See if they can catch anyone off guard here. Which Rasorg Sweeper. Just like that, resets are coming through once again for Misfits. Reset it. You've got a minute 40 on the Baron. You've got two minutes on Infernal Soul for Misfits. And Fnatic perhaps looking a little bit at a game that they had all done and dusted. And wondering where it fell wrong. But Fnatic so... Strong in their own rights. One of our best team fighting teams in the league, in the LEC. They will definitely not be a pushover when it comes towards these next team fights. The question is, can you kill Neon? Alongside that, VTO, although he's one and four, does have three items on this Victor. A good Chaos Storm can be fight defining. That's the thing. There's loads of things that can be fight defining right now. Look at the implications in the inventory as well. Sonya's Hourglass and VTO, stop watching Neon, stop watching Hirid. That means he can just dive in, get the Hectech ultimatum down on one, and then just stopwatch, try and let the rest of his team pick up a kill. But we're still back to the same situation. We were in just five minutes ago, Medic. This time around, though, there's a little bit of better vision control for Misfits. But it's still the same situation. It's Baron spawning up in 40 seconds. It's Fnatic pressuring Misfits by keeping them in Fog of War. But luckily, there's going to be a trade-off objective in just one minute as well. Infernal Soul will be spawning in about 50 seconds. And you can see Misfits, they are using Slaten right now down towards the bot side. May want to use that to get some vision control themselves as well. It's, it's a tense approach. situation. It's the same approach from Misfits as they used around that last Baron. However, they have got a beeline to the mid in here if they want it. Here it trying to clear out that wave. Fnatic will do the same. Hirit, though, could just walk up mid, still has the TP. He can try and hit that inhibitor, and Fnatic then have to pull the trigger on the Baron very quickly and take it down before Hirit can get the inhib. Hirit's already on it. Baron now has spawned. Fnatic looking to fight around this key objective. Misfits looking to answer. Hirit will take the inhib, has the TP to join this fight. Fnatic on the Baron, 5,000 HP on it. Misfits still fighting back in this game. Super Mega Death Rocket hits onto Razzle. Satan goes in. He doesn't get it. Razzle's going to secure it. The GA coming out as well, and now Misfits trying to retreat on Sword of Shadows to the back line, but Neon goes unstoppable, and Neon still on top. A double for him, still not dead. Humanoid pops a stopwatch, but he's got no health left to survive. He tries to get the five point strike, but Powder is just too damn strong. Four members of Fnatic have fallen in that team fight. Wonder the only left man standing. And now three members of Misfits are going to be pushing down the mid lane. They have a wave to deal with. Can Wonder stop it? If he breaks the minion wave, he breaks the push. TP comes through now. What a time for Wonder to stand up for his team. He's had a great split. Last year was a disappointment for him, but here he's locked up, he's rooted, and there's nothing he can do. In the second time in two weeks, Misfits take a game from the jaws of defeat and find victory. You can never count them out. You can just never count them out. They've proven this now two times. And, I mean, it gives you some sort of comfort knowing that you have not only one member in the mid lane to rely on, but also Neon, who's showing up massively today. What a performance from Misfits once again. When we heard from them yesterday, they said all that matters in this week is beating Fnatic. Well, you've done that, lads. You did that in style. Your key player of the games. And for the first time, I think this entire split, there's one name excluded from the list. It's Hirit, Schlatan, and Neon at LEC on Twitter. You can vote. And I think the thing that showed me most is, yes, Misfits have been a VTO team for the majority of spring, 
but today they showed us they do not have to be. And that, that's the big thing. I mean, especially leading up towards playoffs, where it's a best of five scenario, you need the adaptations. Yeah, you really do. Now, after the break, we'll have Neon join us at the analyst desk to talk about whether uh, another crazy comeback win and preview Vitality versus G2. But first, let's listen to Move Your Body by Un Boss and Sebek, available on official LEC playlist on Spotify. I like your moves. Go, get your moves in, man. <laughs> Perks, cups, good to see you. Likewise. You shouldn't have come back here. The LEC isn't big enough for the two of us. I would know. I've been clapping things since before your nickname. Then heading out to retirement last year was a good idea. I hope you learned a few things while I've been away. Manners, clearly not being one of them. Your powers are weak, old man. You've still got a lot to learn, boy. My ethereal chains will destroy you. I had to move when you're perma-stunned by my gold card. My shockwave will make short work of that. Right before my package destroys your entire team. That's my move. I know. Well, it doesn't stand a chance when I use my skeleton beak. Oh yeah? Well, countered by my hex void ray. Wait, that's an ability? Honestly, I'm not really sure. I never learned the names. Yeah, same. Hey, we shouldn't fight. Yeah, you're right. Let's go grab a snack. Sure, let's go. Wait, Gaps, are we psychic? 